the JVP or the jugular venous pressure is a way of telling roughly what the right atrium is doing with regards to its pressure and how it's filling. Um, you can detect it clinically. You have the patient um, sitting uh, upright at about 45 degrees. If the patient's lying flat, it's impossible to see their JVP. Uh, and you measure it from the um, sternal angle, so the angle of Louis, um, and you measure it directly vertical, um, f f upright, perpendicular to that. And anything above sort of three or four centimeters can be said to be uh, raised. So the JVP has some sort of distinct waveforms to it, which detecting clinically is what well, I think is pretty difficult, but apparently some consultant cardiologists can do it. And the way to look at the waveforms for the purpose of the exams is um, it follows this pattern. So A is the atrial contraction. So when, if you imagine the atria is, is contracting, um, the valve is going to be open, but you're going to get this increase in pressure up the um, right atria, and that's going to give a back pressure up the jugular vein, and you'll see that as the A waveform. Then S1 has begun, so the, the um, tricuspid valve is closed, and then you have a contraction, so systole occurs. So when you have systole, the uh, right ventricle is going to contract, and as it contracts, it's going to cause quite a forceful um, expulsion of blood, and this is going to um, bounce a little bit into the tricuspid valve, which is going to bulge into the atria and cause a displacement of blood uh, upwards uh, up the JVP, and that's going to give you this C waveform. X, uh, it's not too clear exactly what that is, but basically when the ventricle is still pumping, it's going to create a little bit of negative pressure on the tricuspid valve itself and pull that down um, into the, the ventricle just slightly, and that's going to cause this drop in the waveform uh, pressure. So then S2 represents um, the um, pulmonary valve is, is, um, is closed then, and that's the end of systole, and so the atrial of filling uh, and the tricuspid valve will be closed initially and that will give you a small amount of added pressure until this tricuspid valve opens again. And then Y will be when the tricuspid valve is open and that's the an emptying of the atria. So once again A for atrial contraction and then C for the tricuspid if you remember the cuspid. So the ventricle is contracting against the tricuspid which is causing a bit of backflow up. Um, and then X is the um, negative pressure effect of having this large forceful ventral contraction causing a small amount of suction on the tricuspid valve and then V is the atrial filling against the closed tricuspid valve and Y is the emptying of the atria. So if you can just sort of imagine exactly what's going on in the head you just need to think about the atria and the pressure that will be in it. So things that will give you an elevated JVP so fluid overload in heart failure um, will obviously cause you to have an elevated JVP. Large A waves are found in uh, tricuspid stenosis and right heart failure, so that means the uh, atria are having to contract more forcefully um, because you have the stenosis or the right-sided right heart failure. As the atria contracts more forcefully, the A wave will appear uh, of greater um, amplitude. So a canon A wave is slightly different, so this is when the atria is contracting um, but the tricuspid valve is, is closed um, and this means you've got um, asynchronous firing and so an atrial flutter you have this sawtooth pattern on ECG um, and this will cause um, atrial contractions against a closed one which will mean that the pressure will, will um, be much higher uh, much quicker in the JVP and in heart block we've seen that um, with complete heart block you have a lack of syn synchronization between the atria and the ventricle, and this will cause an atrial contraction against um, this valve, which is closed. Absent A waves would be AF. You have um, sort of no um, a bag of worms type firing of the atria, which has no um, clear contractions, which is obviously a massive problem um, in allowing your ventricles to fill. So you have an absent A wave, and then a Kussmaul sign is you have the JVP rises with inspiration, which is abnormal and you get this in pericardial effusions and tamponade, and this is saying that the right atria is having very, is at high pressure, it's very difficult for it to fill, so anything which is causing constriction or restriction on the uh, atria filling will cause this small sign. So when you take a deep breath in, 
Um, much like when you think about splitting, you would expect the JVP to, to go down as the thoracic pressure becomes more negative as your um, chest wall expands. Um, and this would you'd expect it to be sucked into the right atria, but in this in this problem because um, the right atria is having difficulty in filling because of these uh, fusion or tamponade, uh, this will cause uh, the JVP to rise with inspiration, which is a small sign.